So you have to develop the right mindset and let's just put it out there and take it one after the other. You have to develop the um, right mindset to be able to take advantage of these funding opportunities. And um, one after the other, set realistic expectations, right? Um, you don't have an idea and then you go to somebody and you say, I have this wonderful idea and it's worth $10 million. My business is worth $10 million. Or rather, my idea is worth $10 million. Give me uh, um, $1 million to get 10% uh, of the business. It doesn't, um, it doesn't work that way, right? You have to be realistic um, with your valuation and with your expectation. If uh, looking at the stage your business is, you ask for something that is practical, right? If you are going to family and friends or colleagues, you offer uh, something. So you have to be realistic with the um, or what you are requesting for uh, from the funder. You cannot take it their milestones. Probably have to start with um, just an example. You need okay, let's say five thousand uh, dollars to invest in your product. And then the next stage, you probably need 20,000, 50, 100, like that, rather than just blowing up um, at the start. Be realistic. That's the right mindset to have. Then sell, don't beg. Now, this may seem like a no-brainer, but it would interest you to know that quite a number of people who apply for funding opportunities are asking, are begging for money. I mean, someone who approaches and rather someone is applying for a grant and is saying, oh, please, I have come from a very poor family. I need money to uh, be able to pay my sister's school fees. I need to uh, set up my business. I need money and all that. Nobody wants to listen to that. Nobody is, um, people are not looking for money for, uh, for sympathy base. They are looking for money. They want to put their money where it's going to bear, uh, it's going to have some return. Even if the interest is social impact, they want to be able to look back tomorrow and, and be proud to have been part of your story. So when applying for um, funding opportunities, sell yourself. You should be selling your product, selling your ideas, selling your, your personality, selling your team, and giving people reason why to invest in your business. And you have to understand that capital is abundant. Money is, there, is out there. It's the it's, it's it's short seems to be short of is the ideas, the businesses to invest in. Uh, when you have the right idea, you have the right um, personality, and you put yourself out there with the right mindset, you can attract the capital to um, invest in your business. And then um, there is a competition skill set and competition mindset, right? When you are applying for um, application competitions, so I already mentioned about sell, don't beg. That's a competition mindset. You have to understand that your goal is to convince this person to want to invest in your business. And also, you need to understand what, what should go into your application, right? You um, have seen, uh, been um, interviewed uh, people who apply for grants. And in the interview, just because I, I mean, the interview, the judges deliberately had to ask some pressing question. They were able to get some answers that would have given the, the candidates some advantage if they had put it in the application from the onset. So you need to understand what should go into your application and what should stay out of it. Because what stays in your application can make or break it. And what stays out of it can as well make or break it. So when you understand the key things, you should understand the key things that should go into your application and what should stay out of it. Like your story is... Uh, very, very important aspect of convincing someone to want to invest in your business. But as a matter of fact, uh, investors typically invest in you. They invest in individuals, not necessarily uh, the product. I mean, when you think about it, we have MySpace and we have Facebook, and Facebook ended up being the success, success story. Both great ideas, almost same ideas, great ideas. But the personality, it was Mark Zuckerberg that made Facebook successful. So investors or funders, are interested in your personality. They're interested in your story. They want you to tell that inspiring story of where you came from, how you got about this idea, and what makes you the right person to be running this business and to be solving, uh, wanting to solve this problem. That is uh, something that's going to give you advantage when uh, applying for funding. And then you have to be consistent and persistent. That you have applied to one and two or three and didn't get it does not mean that you should. Uh, give up. It doesn't mean that it is not for you. 
you have to keep applying, understand what you did right and what you did wrong. And interestingly, a lot of these um, competitions give room for feedback, right? Even uh, if you were not selected for um, the second round, there's room for, for you to get uh, feedback on um, what you did well and what you need to improve on. So take the time to go through that. Uh, if you if you applied for the African African uh, Business Heroes, go through your application. There are, there are segments where uh, the the uh, reviewer and the judges, Judge One, uh, gave you feedback on what you could have done better or what you need to do going forward in your next application. So these are going to give you uh, something to take away, and then you keep trying. Uh, it doesn't always happen in first trial. Some people are lucky to have to apply first and get it, but some have to try again and again uh, before they end up getting it. Then show up with the right personal brand. Your personality, like I said, is a uh, key aspect of what um, funders want to uh, apply to, um, want to uh, invest in. Okay. And next, you need to know your risk uh, profile. And this is where we've already discussed that. Um, okay, I'm seeing some comments popping up. We get to we get all that. So you need to understand, like we already discussed that, the stage of your business, the, the motivation of starting your business, because the, the motivation of starting your business can be a risk factor for your business uh, when you are seeking a fund. Some, fund uh, some funders or investors wouldn't want to invest in a business that is just for income stream or in a business that is for family legacy or a business that is venture, that is a venture business that just want to grow and stuff. You'd be interested to know there are some funders that wants to invest in um, big vision uh, uh, businesses like Amazon, the Amazons of this world, the Facebooks, that's where they want to put in their money. So you have to understand where your business lies uh, uh, in, in in the scheme of things when it comes to uh, funders. So you also your competitor, you have to understand, have an understanding of your competition and your unique selling proposition. Do you have a chance uh, based on your USP to scale, to get through in this market? Do you have a chance to succeed considering your competition in this market? Uh, that I remember a business I, I reviewed, uh, app application I reviewed, and the business is going into the refrigerator space. And um, I mean, it sounds like a very fantastic idea. But then we had to now consider the fact that they are already big players in the markets. So why would um, what stops a big player from just um, modifying the product they already have and start producing what, is, what you are uh, producing as well? Okay, so what is USP? USP is unique selling proposition, your unique selling point. What's, what is unique about your business? What is unique? What are you bringing to the table that should make a, a customer, a client, choose to do business with you other than your competitor? It's um, USP. So someone asked that question. I hope you get it clear. All right. So you also consider the... Um, Target the right investors. I think this is already clear at this point. Um, the right investor, based on your business, your stage of business, your motivation for business, you have to get a clear understanding. Are they uh, profiting? Are they social impact driven? Is it for foreign policy innovation? Or is it government um, uh, interest um, funder? So get this understanding and target the right um, investor and funder for your business. So building a strong application has to be the strong application. So this is where we're going to wrap up uh, about uh, 10 points here. I've talked about telling the, telling the inspiring story behind your business. You have to understand how to craft a story that inspires. You have to understand how to present yourself story-wise, present the story behind your business. Um, uh, often, I believe you have probably watched and listened to interviews uh, from successful entrepreneurs. Often, they are not asked questions about what's going on in the internal side of the business. They are not asked about the nitty-gritty of business. What they are asked is a story. Often, what you see out there is a story behind the business, story behind uh, the persons who have um, achieved the success of the business. Those stories sell. And 
ensure that you take the time to craft a story. Don't wait until you, you have to apply and then you have to start thinking about how, okay, what story do I tell? How do I tell the story? Craft that story, tell that story. And as a matter of fact, you should be telling the story of your business as part of your marketing. So it should come naturally when you're applying for a business to tell your story, which is already out there. So rather than just wanting to crank up something and just put out, uh, put on your application. Because I've, I've seen a lot of applicants, when they are asked to tell a story, the story of their business, they still go back to tell the solution they are trying to solve or go back to talk about the problem of the market. I mean, your computer will tell the same, uh, say the same thing about the problem. Everybody in the market will tell the same story about uh, the product, uh, about the industry. What makes you, often makes you different is your own story story behind you and your business that's what uh, makes you different and it's it's something you need to explore uh, uh, as much as you can when applying for these uh, competitions then uh, give a clear plan on how uh, how the fund will be allocated and, and the potential impact is going to make in your business uh, for people who may have experience in um, as for funds or who may have even won some funding opportunities before. They, some of these things may seem like, oh, of course, everybody should know this. But when you are behind the scene, uh, you'll, be, you'll be shocked at the number of applications that turns out to uh, not meet the basic expectations for, for an average applicant. And if you are able to take care of these points, these things, you already put yourself in the top 10, the top 10 minutes of your application. Then other things can, can follow uh, when considering uh, your application. So have a clear plan of how you're going to use the money. If you're applying for the, the USDF, uh, United States Development uh, Foundation Fund for Agriculture, you're applying for the entire $250,000, of which there's room uh, to request between $50,000 and $250,000. So if you are requesting for the 250,000, you should have a breakdown, a clear path on how and where the money is going, is, is going into and how that money is going to make a difference with taking your business from where it is to where you want, it, uh, want to take it. So have that well articulated. And I'll also add that you take the time to have these things um, uh, outlined already. It, it don't make it an impromptu thing, an afterthought, you know, you sit on the application and then you have to just take this whole thing and put it out there. You, um, you would um, strain uh, your, yourself with um, thought process uh, compared to if you have taken the time to, to think through uh, the entire thing. Okay, so demonstrate th thorough understanding of your industry, the competitor, and the market. So you have to show that you understand your industry, that you understand your competitor, understand your market. You have to demonstrate that you have this understanding and um, that you are not just in business. I, I, I remember asking someone, someone who uh, told me about a fantastic idea they have. And I asked him, okay, who are the competitors in the market? Who, uh, what is the market, uh, market value of this, of this industry? And uh, well, the response is that look, there's nobody doing this. There's no computer. But by the time I took the time to look, search online and realize that there are a lot of people doing it already. So when you are applying for funding opportunities or you are meeting a fund, a, an investor, a potential investor, you have to go with deep knowledge, deep understanding of industry, of the competitors, the people already in your, in your in the industry and the market itself, the, the demography of the, of, the, of the industry. You have to de uh, demonstrate the thorough understanding. And also be thorough, demonstrate thorough and honest understanding of your business numbers. Um, it's, it's just, it's interesting to, to see this, the repetition of this error in a, a, a number of applications of people, applicants submitting a different number in the application and when they came to the interview, presenting a totally different number from what they gave in the application. That's already an, an automatic red flag. It shows that this, this person does not understand the numbers, the financials of the internet. And this has to be a constant. I mean, you, your numbers, your revenue for the last quarter 
has to be constant. It doesn't have to change. It has to be constant. Your your um, initial uh, previous invest uh, investment has to be constant. It's, it doesn't have to change. So these are numbers you need to under, you need to know that whenever you are asked, whether on an interview or when you apply, you are, you have the same consistent um, number and uh, a representation of um, how your business is, is doing. And then also USP, I've already talked about USP, uh, have a smart future plan. Okay, so smart future plan and financial focus. So when you're talking about the future plan of your business, you should um, have a definite plan, right? A plan has to be defined. You, it's something you should have thought about. And it will seem, this would seem, um, it will seem like, it's a no-brainer. Everybody understands that. But a lot of applicants make this mistake of just going um, with the flow, just writing a plan based on, I uh, just want to get this application done with deadline. But then when it's it's interview and they are asked questions based on the future plan they presented, they probably would have forgotten what they wrote. They would have forgotten and they are given a different response. So you have to, you have to, uh, have a future plan for your business and a, a financial forecast uh, for your business and have it at every application, every time you apply, you are using the same, um, use the same information, the same data in your application. Build a solid team and organizational structure. So I talked about these constrained businesses where owner, the owner probably uses the same bank account, personal account for business accounts. Uh, business has no structure, it's just uh, one person and then uh, every other person. When uh, you're applying for funding, funders want to see that your business is organized, it has a structure, and uh, you have a solid team behind your business that can drive this business to growth and success. So have that understanding. If your business is still um, at a stage where the structure is not yet defined, uh, you still have to, can still take the time to put that in order uh, before going out to uh, seek for funding. Then get a second opinion from a knowledgeable person or persons when applying. Don't just apply and submit. Uh, get someone to review your application uh, to, to give you feedback on what you have put out and um, guide you on how to improve on your application. Uh, it, it would it's it's interesting how little things can make difference in in one's application. I remember a particular applicant who, just because he, he, he didn't, uh, he, he, he submitted a link, a Google Drive link to a video without making the video public. Now he had a fantastic business, fantastic business plan, a fantastic collection, market traction on point, everything was on point. But simply because his video was not made public. So when the reviewer took on the video, he needed to get permission to be able to do the video. That was what disqualified him. Just little things like this. If the applicant had gotten a second person to do the application, probably the person would have identified that and given the person a head start into the uh, competition. And uh, in fact, this applicant had the potential of getting a totally fantastic business. But just this little uh, was what disqualified him. So it's important that you get someone to review your application. That can make a whole lot of friends uh, on whether you move forward in the competition or not. So um, I think uh, that, would be, that would be it. So find funding opportunities. We have After School Africa, um, afterschoolafrica.com uh, slash entrepreneurship. We publish. Uh, and uh, funding opportunities as they come. You can go there right now. I'm sure you will see a number of um, opportunities that are currently ongoing. So someone asked for a list of uh, opportunities. Uh, just go to afterschoolafrica.com forward slash entrepreneurship and uh, you will see, uh, you can view the currently available uh, ones. And the ones that are, that are no longer available, you can take note of them so that when they are open, you, you would get to uh, apply for them. And uh, so also to a, a newsletter if you haven't, so that you can receive a newsletter when these applications open. So our YouTube channel, you can uh, 
subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, across our social media page. So that's it, guys. Um, keep pushing it and never give up.